Welcome, gentlemen, to our in-depth discussion. Today we have three cheating wives, so please ensure you're comfortably seated, maybe with a drink, and let's begin. If this content resonates with you, kindly like and subscribe. My newlywed wife cheated on me, and I'm beyond hurt. I don't know what flair to put because I honestly never thought I'd have to post here. I'm 22 and my wife is 21. We got married young because we both agreed there was no reason to wait, and we wanted to spend our lives together. We have only been married for two months. For reference, we work at the same job. I usually close and she opens, but we have two days off together. Last night, I noticed she seemed upset. She was guilty about something, and I had to coax what happened out of her. The guy she had slept with regularly before we started dating was about to move away from our city. He invited her out to lunch one last time, and she made it seem like he was one of her first friends when she moved here. So, I didn't think anything of it and told her to be safe. I went into work on Monday, and she got off work and had a smoothie with him. Apparently, he offered her to come up to his apartment one last time for the memories. They ended up making out and having sex. She said he initiated it. In the following encounters, she never mentioned this mistake. While I was closing again on Tuesday, she went back to his place, and they did it again. Everything the second time. Again, she did not tell me this. Wednesday to Friday, we work opposite shifts but have Thursdays off to hang out. She never once mentions the lunch she had, and I had to ask her about it to find anything out. She lied and said they just had smoothies and talked for two and a half hours. While I'm closing once again, she went back to his apartment a third time, and she cheated again. This day was terrible for me at work, and I texted her telling her I needed a hug when I got home. Unbeknownst to me, she was just sucking another man's stick not but four hours before. In the few hours we spoke about what she did, she said she didn't believe it was a mistake. She felt guilt but not regret, and then said if he never moved away, she would have done this even more, and had never planned on telling me about it. She said so much more and even listed reasons why she thinks the sex with him is better than with me. She even deleted chats she had with him when I left the room for a moment. I caught her as she was closing Snapchat. She claimed she loved him throughout our whole relationship, and even asked me about my thoughts for an open marriage, which is something we both discussed and agreed we'd never do if we got married. On her phone was text to her cousin about look how cute this man is. I'm literally rethinking my marriage over him, and searches for why do I want a divorce after two months. She had even looked into jobs and apartments in the town this guy moved to. She had a whole exit planned out after two months. Why does she even marry me? It's a simple answer, ah. She married you because she wanted a wedding and an attempt to take care of her. Dude, you need to divorce this person as soon as possible before the affair fog goes away. Luckily, you found out now who she truly is before children got involved. It's best to move on and let karma take care of her. We all know she's gonna get pumped and dumped anyways. Good luck, Ob. Exposing my wife's infidelity at her 50th birthday party, posted by Reddit user Artistic Tim. Hey Reddit, I need to get something off my chest. I found out that my wife, let's call her Lisa, had been having an affair. In a whirlwind of emotions, I made a decision that forever changed the course of our lives. It all began when I stumbled upon some incriminating evidence on Lisa's phone. Text messages, explicit photos, and videos exchanged between her and another man. It was like a punch to the gut. The foundation of trust we had built over the years came crashing down in an instant. Anger, hurt, and betrayal flooded my heart. I couldn't let this go unnoticed. I wanted Lisa to understand the pain she had caused me and our family, and what better occasion than her 50th birthday party, a gathering of our closest friends and family. It might sound extreme, but I was fueled by a mix of anger and desperation. In the days leading up to the party, I meticulously crafted a PowerPoint presentation that would expose Lisa's affair. But as I worked on it, I had a change of heart. Instead of focusing solely on the incriminating evidence, I decided to showcase the beautiful moments we had shared over the years. During the party, I stood up and began my speech. I shared stories of how Lisa and I met, our wedding day, the birth of our daughter, and the countless happy memories we had created together. I wanted everyone to remember the love we once had. However, just as the atmosphere filled with warmth and nostalgia, I switched to the PowerPoint presentation. The screen changed, revealing the conversations between Lisa and her affair partner. Shock and disbelief washed over the faces of our guests as they saw the truth unfold before them. But the surprises didn't end there. I took a bold step and replaced Lisa's original birthday cake with one that displayed explicit images of her and her lover. As the cake was brought out, I encouraged everyone to sing happy birthday to Lisa, who was now visibly distraught. It was a jarring moment that no one expected. To add the final blow, I handed Lisa divorce papers in front of everyone. The room fell silent, and tears streamed down her face. It was a devastating moment for her. 
In the aftermath, Lisa's family, including her parents, condemned my actions, claiming I had gone too far and publicly humiliated her. They thought it was unnecessary and cruel. However, to my relief, my own family, including our daughter, stood by me. They understood the pain I had endured and believed that my actions were justified. Reflecting on it now, I can't help but wonder if there was a better way to handle the situation. Perhaps seeking counseling or discussing our issues privately would have been more appropriate. But in the heat of the moment, I felt compelled to expose the truth in such a dramatic fashion. Reddit, I share this story not to encourage others to follow in my footsteps, but rather as a cautionary tale. Infidelity can be devastating, and the emotions it stirs can lead us down unexpected paths. Seek support, communicate openly, and consider all the consequences before making decisions that could impact your life and those around you. And now for an update on my situation. First and foremost, I want to clarify some details that were left out in my original post. My ex-wife Lisa didn't contest the divorce. She acknowledged her affair and surprisingly cited my demanding work schedule as the reason she sought comfort elsewhere. According to her, the affair partner made her feel young and desired again, filling a void that she believed I couldn't. My daughter, who suspected something was amiss, had been misled by Lisa. She manipulated the situation, feeding her misinformation to maintain their secret. It breaks my heart to think that my daughter had to endure the confusion and emotional turmoil caused by their actions. Speaking of the affair partner, it turns out he used to work for me before the pandemic hit, and I had to let him go due to financial constraints. Little did I know that he would find his way back into our lives, this time as the catalyst for the destruction of my marriage. Following the incident at the birthday party, my former in-laws threatened legal action against me, believing I had gone too far in exposing Lisa's infidelity. However, Lisa managed to talk them out of it, admitting that she deserved the consequences of her actions. It's a relief to know that at least she took responsibility for the pain she caused. Since the divorce, Lisa has expressed deep regret for her affair. She claims to have realized the gravity of her actions and the toll it took on our family. While I appreciate a remorse, it doesn't change the fact that the trust we once shared has been irreparably shattered. On a personal note, I've been embracing single life and rediscovering myself outside of the confines of a failing marriage. It hasn't been easy, and I won't deny that I've battled with dark thoughts. But the love I have for my daughter is my anchor, the reason I stay strong and keep moving forward. I could never put her through the pain of losing a parent to suicide. To those who question the authenticity of my story, claiming it's fake or exaggerated, I have a simple message. Kiss my bum. This is my life, my pain, and my journey. I share it with the intention of finding support and connecting with others who may have faced similar struggles. If you choose not to believe it, that's your prerogative. But don't diminish the reality of my experience. Thank you to those who have shown empathy, offered kind words, and shared their own stories. Your support has meant the world to me during this difficult time. Let's remember that life can be challenging, but it's our resilience and the support of others that help us find our way through the darkest moments. As for those who worry about Lisa's public humiliation, but don't care about the humiliation that I suffered for being cheated on. Cut them out of your life, ah. You did the right thing, and I'm sure there could have been a million different ways you could have gone about this. But would any of them make you feel as good as this one? Absolutely not. Always expose cheaters, gentlemen. Next story, my brothers. A stepdaughter's loyalty to her stepdad saves the day. Not a BTB, and no willing cucks. I hope you enjoy it. Amy and I, John Stevens, have been married for 12 years. She is 38 and I am 43. Amy had been divorced for two years when we met. We dated for about a year and then got married by a justice of the peace in the quiet civil service. The only guest in attendance was Nicole, her daughter who was five years old at the time. Amy's ex, Ron, is an over-the-road trucker whom she divorced after catching him with a female trucker. Once divorced he married the gal, and they bought their own rig and our long-haul contract driving team. They visit our town for a few days about twice a year to see Nicole. He seems like an okay guy and is never late with his child support payments. Nicole told me she enjoys his visits, but thinks of me as her dad. Of course, being the stepfather of a cute 17-year-old girl is not without its challenges. While we usually get along quite well, she's still a teenage girl and attracts a lot of attention from teenage boys. Just because I'm the stepdad doesn't mean I'm any less protective of my little girl. I've had to give the stink eye to a couple of bozos that came sniffing around, and that pissed Nicole off, but a dad has to do what a dad has to do. Nicole is an excellent student and a decent athlete. I was happy to buy her a car for her 16th birthday, not only because she deserved it, but also because it freed Amy and me from all the taxi service required for her extracurricular activities. Amy had been working part-time, and when Nicole got a car, she decided to go back to full-time work. 
I was not thrilled about the idea, but her extra income would add greatly to Nicole's college fund, so I supported her decision. Not long after her return to full-time Amy was invited to a note with her co-workers. The gals liked to go out on a Friday night, and usually, they'd go to Jimmy's, a local cafe bar that had decent food and live music. It was not a nightclub that attracted a swarm of youngsters, it was much more subdued. Amy and her five co-workers usually attracted a good bit of attention from the guys at Jimmy's. Two of the girls are single, mid-twenties, hotties that are out every Friday. The other three are average-looking, young married moms. At 38, Amy was the oldest of the ladies, but years of work at the gym had allowed her to keep herself as fit as the two young hotties in her group. The four married ladies didn't go out every weekend, but usually accompanied the youngster about once a month. Their evening usually would include a bite to eat and a couple of drinks. All of the women would get asked to dance, and the married ladies usually accepted one or two dances each evening. The four moms would seldom stay past 10 o'clock, and never past 11. Girls' night in started when one of the youngsters tore up her knee on a ski trip and didn't want to go to Jimmy's on crutches. Gail, one of the moms, invited everyone to her house. The ladies liked the more intimate and comfortable setting and decided to continue the night instead of a no. About three years into the rotation, it was Amy's turn to host the night for the fourth time. I had been home for each of her previous gatherings and ended up being the waiter and bartender while the ladies sat around in our family room. The gals usually consumed a fair amount of booze and could get a little raunchy toward the end of the evening. After having been smacked on the ass a few times when I brought in fresh drinks, I tried to stay out of harm's way as those evenings progressed. To that end, I took my laptop into the dining room and was reviewing some quarterly reports. The dining room is at the opposite end of our house, well away from the ladies. I barely heard Amy yell for me to bring more wine. The wine fridge is in the dining room, so I grabbed a bottle of her favorite white wine, opened it, and took it in. I poured a couple of glasses and Ginny, the youngest of the group, said, Amy, your manservant is quite handsome. Does he just pour wine or is he available for other services? Amy laughed and said, that old man is probably older than your dad. Ginny looked me up and down and said, that's okay, I always was a daddy's girl. I must have turned bright red as all the ladies roared with laughter. I winked at Ginny and strutted back to the dining room, empty wine bottle in hand. I got my laptop and snuck upstairs to my bedroom. My phone went off, alerting me that someone was in my driveway. I wondered who would be coming to the party this late, but then my camera showed me it was Nicole. I got up and went down to greet her. She came through the door dragging a large canvas bag full of laundry. Hey, baby. Why are you home? We weren't expecting you for a few more weeks. The plumbing burst in the dorm and flooded us out. We're on remote classes until it's fixed. I'm guessing that will be about the end of term, so here I am. Welcome home, honey. Your mother is hosting her night tonight. I'm sure they'd love for you to join them. I'm hiding in my room. Nicole laughed, I was going to just crash, but a glass of wine sounds good. I guess I'll go say hello to everyone. She kissed me on the cheek and scampered off to see the ladies as I climbed the steps. In the morning I had the kitchen to myself as the girls had both slept in. I was on my second cup of coffee when Nicole came into the kitchen. Good morning sweetheart. I made cinnamon rolls, they're in the oven and should still be warm. Thanks, Dad, she said in a tired voice. She got coffee and a roll and sat at the table. She was unusually quiet, and after a few attempts to start a conversation with her failed, I knew something was bothering her. Nicole, is something wrong, sweetie? She squirmed in her chair a bit, and I could see she was wrestling with a decision. Dad, I she turned away to check the stairs and then returned to me. I heard something last night that upset me. I didn't know if I should say anything, but I well, Ginny was pretty drunk last night, and she kept saying things to mom about you. Oh, baby, she was pretty drunk and she was just being silly. Please don't let anything she said about me upset you. At first I thought it was funny. She kept talking about how sexy you are, and how she really wanted to be with an unselfish guy for once, instead of another young pump and dump, chump. She said she's been jealous of mom since she told them you always ensure she gets hers when you're together. Oh god, baby, I'm sorry you had to hear that kind of stuff about me and your mom. I had no idea Amy talked about our private lives when she was with her friends. I'm sure it was embarrassing for you to hear that kind of thing. She chuckled. Yeah, well, that didn't bother me too much because, well, girls talk, so it was no big deal until... What? Did your mom say something gross about us? Oh, baby, they were drunk, I'm so sorry. No dad, it was Ginny. She said it wasn't fair that mom got to have you and her ex. I pause. My brain was trying to compute what Nicole had just said, but Ron was years ago, Ginny doesn't know him, I mean, how could she? Dad. Didn't mom tell you? 
Ron sold his truck and is working as a dispatcher for Fleetside Logistics. He and Diane moved back here months ago. I was stunned. No, she never said anything. But still, how would Ginny know Ron unless he's been to Amy's office? He must have visited Amy, and she told Ginny he was her ex when she introduced him. I don't know, Dad, maybe it was just the wine, but it seemed like Ginny was implying something was going on. I just laughed it off like everybody else, but it bothered me. Okay, honey, well don't worry about it. I'm sure it's nothing. I'll talk to Amy about it. Now, do you want another roll? I put another roll on her plate and returned the others to the oven. We chatted about school and how her remote classes worked. She said she'd have to go back to campus for her exams, but the rest of her classes would be online. Well, I have a lot of yard work to do today. Do you have any plans? I'm going to get my laundry started this morning and then call Heather and see what she's up to. I haven't seen her in a while. Oh, I remember Heather, my mind conjured up a memory of the teenaged hot tie, I haven't seen her since your pool party. Dad. What's with the big grin? Are you thinking about her white bikini? Busted. Uh, I, er, well, she did look pretty cute in that swimsuit. Dad. Don't be a perv. She was only 18 then, she's 21 now. Neither one of us look like a high school girl anymore, she said and laughed. I'd finished cutting the backyard and came in for a drink of water. Amy was sitting at the table sipping a cup of coffee. She looked up when I came into the room. Did the mower wake you? Yes, but I needed to get up anyway. Oh man, I drank too much wine last night. I can't imagine how Ginny, Ellen, and Mary are doing today. I just nodded and finished my water. Well, I've got to get the rest of the yard done, I said and then turned and walked out the back door. As I cut the grass I thought about what Nicole had heard and what it meant. It was odd that Amy never mentioned Ron was back in town and working just a mile from her office. It's even worse that he may have visited her office, maybe taken her to lunch and she never told me. It's clear that I need to talk with her about Ron and why she chose not to inform me of her interaction with him. I finished my chores and went inside to get a much needed shower. Amy was dressed and sitting in our front room, sipping coffee. Her hair was still damp from the shower. Are you all finished with the mowing? Yes, now I need a shower, I replied as I climbed the steps. After my shower, I opened the bathroom door and could see Amy sitting in one of the small chairs next to her bedroom windows. She had a magazine on her lap and closed it when she looked up at me. As I walked out, I wrapped a towel around my waist and held it in place with one hand. I didn't acknowledge her as I moved toward the dresser. There's my handsome man. Do you need some help drying off? Two days ago that kind of flirty invitation would likely have led to a quick romp in the sack, but today it earned little more than a grunt as my reply. I dropped the towel and slipped on a pair of boxers. Amy just stared at me as I pulled on a t-shirt and slipped on my shorts. John. Are you okay? Is something wrong? I studied her face as I sat in the other side chair. We have a problem. I believe you've been hiding things from me, and I want to know what's going on. Amy's mouth dropped open as she did her best fish face impersonation. It took her a moment to gather herself. I, ah, uh, hiding things. What do you mean, hiding things? Nicole told me Ron and Diane moved back to town. She said Ginny mentioned him last night, so she's obviously met him. Would you please explain to me how it is that your coworker could have met your ex-husband? John, I think I told you they had moved back here, at least I thought I did. I mean, it's no big deal, why would we care if they moved back here? I care because you absolutely never told me about seeing Ron. I care because you must have introduced him to Ginny and never bothered to tell me you've seen him. I care because I think you didn't want me to know he was back, and I want to know why you didn't want me to know he was around. No, 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 I thought I told you, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to hide anything. Ginny and I ran into Ron when we went to Barron's for lunch a few months ago. He was there with a coworker, and we ended up sitting together. And how many times have you seen Ron since he moved back to town? Uh, er, well, I've had lunch with him a couple of times, and he and his coworker were at Joe's when I went for an after work drink with the girls. So, did he know in advance that you girls were going to be at Joe's, or was it just another innocent random event? I swear I didn't tell him, but maybe Ginny told Dave, his coworker. John, it's no big deal, nothing happened. We are friends, nothing more. Then why were you hiding all this from me? Does Diane know you two are hanging out together, or is Ron hiding things from his spouse too? John, please, I don't know if he told Diane. Baby, you're making way too much of this. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, I guess I just didn't think it was a big deal. I promise I'll let you know if I ever see him again. I just looked at her, searching her face. She seemed sincere, but she had successfully hidden her activities from me for months. 
Maybe what she was saying is true, but my gut said she was not being completely honest with me. I decided not to say anything about what Nicole had heard Ginny say, because I didn't want to put Nicole in the middle of things. I shook my head slowly, Amy, I am not very happy about this. I can't help but feel you deliberately hid things from me, and I have to ask myself why you would feel the need to do that. Oh, baby, I'm so sorry I have upset you. I guess I can see why you'd be bothered, but Ron is just an old friend to me, nothing more. Amy, you were married to the guy. You slept with him for several years and gave birth to his child. That's a good bit more than just an old friend. Look, you know I'm not usually the jealous type, but this whole circumstance bothers me. I'm sorry. You're right, I've been inconsiderate of you. I swear I'll keep you better informed about what I'm doing. I nodded, bringing the discussion to a close. I still was not at all convinced she was being completely honest with me. For the first time in our relationship, I was unsure of my wife's fidelity. I stood and she hugged me. I hugged her back and kissed the top of her head. I released her and told her I was going to the hardware store and would be back in an hour or so. I was not happy and she knew it. I had no proof she'd done anything more than she'd admitted, but my questions had put her on notice that I was now suspicious of her. I assumed that would cause her to rethink what she'd been doing. The question in my mind is, would she now make every effort to be completely above board with Ron? Or, would she become far more careful in concealing her activities with her ex-husband? Over the next week, things were a bit chilly at home. I tried to act normal, but I'm not a great actor. Amy went out of her way to try to make me relax and forget about what she'd done. She skipped an after work outing with her co-workers, opting instead to call me and ask me to meet her at a quiet little cafe near my office. We had drinks and a light dinner. She talked about work and asked about my latest project. It was quite pleasant and when we got home she dragged me into the bedroom. Amy was in the shower and I was sitting in my recliner, sipping a beer when Nicole came downstairs. Well, from all the noise I heard, I guess you two are back to normal. I may have blushed a little as I chuckled. I guess so. She has been going out of her way to keep me informed of her activities, and it appears she is avoiding any secret meetings with Ron. She even skipped an after work thing with the girls to go to dinner with me. Hey, that's great, maybe it was just Ginny being stupidly drunk and nothing more. Dad, I know mom loves you, we both do. Thank you, sweetheart, I love you too. Oh, by the way, I'm going to dinner at Ron and Diane's tomorrow night. Diane called me this morning. She said Ginny told her I was home. Seems Ginny is dating Ron's friend from work, and they were over at Ron's a couple of days ago. Oh? Hmm, I think I remember Amy saying something about Ginny and Ron's co-worker. I think she called him Dave, or Dan, I'm not sure. Well, I guess I'll find out tomorrow because they are supposed to be there, too. Just then Amy came down the stairs. Nicole gave her a silly grin and said, Well, now that things have quieted down upstairs, I guess I'll go finish my homework. Amy laughed and said, well you've got about two hours before I drag him back up there and start all over. OMG. Mom. TMI. TMI, Nicole yelled as she scurried up the steps. I smiled at Amy, I thought it was the dad's job to embarrass the kid. Nope, this is 2023, moms can do it too, she said chuckling. A few days later Nicole told me she had a good time visiting Ron and Diane. She said Dave told her she looked a lot like her mom. Then he explained he'd met Amy the same day he'd met Jenny. It had been when he and Ron ran into the Mabarons and ended up at their table for lunch. Nicole said Diane acted a bit surprised by that and remarked that she hadn't known Ginny worked with Mom. I thought about what she had told me, at least his story matched what Amy had told me about having lunch with him. It was interesting that Ron maybe had not told Diane about bumping into Amy. Why would the two of them try to hide their accidental meeting? Duck, those old suspicions were back in my head. My boss told me he needed me to go to Cleveland Friday afternoon and attend a 3 o'clock meeting at our regional office there. Three of us from Columbus were going. After the meeting, the regional manager was taking us to dinner. I told Amy and Nicole it would be midnight by the time I got back home. No matter, I'm going out with friends from school and will likely stay with one of them. I'll text mom and let her know with whom I stay. I was planning to go to Mary's Nye, but I won't stay too late. Honey, if you drink after dinner, just get a room and spend the night. We don't want anything to happen to you. The Friday meeting went well and we wrapped things up a bit early. We decided to go to happy hour and have a drink and appetizers rather than a full meal. I had just ordered the first round when the regional manager got a call saying his child was ill and the wife was taking him to urgent care. Tom, for God's sake if your son is that ill, just go help your wife. The big boss isn't here and we'll all tell him you were a wonderful host. My colleagues laughed and joined in telling Tom to go take care of his family. Once he left I told the guys I was heading home too. The other two decided to stay and make an evening of it. 
I started to text Amy, but I remembered she was headed to her night, so I just drove home. I got home at about 8 o'clock to an empty house. I changed and settled onto the couch to watch a movie and sip some Angel Envy Rye. As I sat there I heard a ding and realized it had come from Amy's iPad. Her iPad was synced to her iPhone, so calls and messages appeared on both at the same time. I ignored it, then it dinged again, and then several more times. Curiosity got the best of me and I picked it up. I flip over the cover and entered her password, Nicole's birthday. There were several texts to and from Ginny. Amy. Hey girl, I'm at Mary's, where are you? Ginny. Home, hanging with Dave. Ginny. Ron's here, wanna come over? Amy, yeah, but I better not, John's been weird lately. Ginny. But we had so much fun the last time, sure you can't make it. Amy. You're bad. John is in Cleve till late. Ginny. Duck ya. Get your bum over here. Let's party. Amy. K-O-M-W. Well, duck me. She's leaving Mary's and heading to meet Ron at Ginny's. I pulled up her Find My Phone app, and it showed her phone in motion. I checked her contacts and put Ginny's info into my phone. I sat watching her iPhone icon move as she headed to Ginny's apartment. I reread the text, it said they'd had fun the last time, so that meant this would not be the first time she'd been to Ginny's to play. I opened my contacts and found a number for Diane. It was from years ago when they had taken Nicole for a weekend. I tried the number, and surprisingly, she answered. Hello John. I'm surprised to hear from you oh god. Is Nicole alright? Yes. Yes. She's fine, is Ron available? No, he bowls on the company team on Fridays. Kinda sucks cause it leaves me home alone every Friday. Diane, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I think Ron is at Ginny's, and Amy is on her way there to meet him. What? No, he took his bowling ball. He and Ginny's boyfriend, Dave, are on the same team. Diane, does he have a locator on his phone? Yeah, we did that when we were traveling so much. Pull it up on your phone. I think it will show him at 1724 Timbers Lane. That's Ginny's apartment. She fumbled with her phone for almost a full minute, duck. That bastard has been lying to me. I show Amy's phone there now too. I am about to head over there, do you want to meet me there? You're damn right I do. Your house is closer, so you'll probably beat me there. What are you driving? A black Honda CRV, you. Blue Ram 1500, I'll find you. I found a place to park and waited for Diane. I saw her big truck pull in, got out of my car, and headed over to meet her. It had been several years since I'd seen Diane. To say she changed was an understatement. I remembered her as a thin, tall lady. She was still tall, maybe 5'10 in her cowboy boots. I'm guessing she weighed well over 200 pounds now, so big, but not fat. John. Jesus, you haven't changed a bit. You're still a fine looking hunk of man. I know I must be a shock, I'm about twice the size I was when I saw you last. I got into women's powerlifting and bolt up. I tried not to gape at the Amazon standing before me. Wow, powerlifting, that's something. Uh, that's her unit there, I said pointing. I ordered a pizza and the guy should be here any minute. I'll pay him and then take it up to the door. When they open up, just follow me in. The pizza guy pulled up, music blaring. When he opened the car door a huge cloud of smoke came out with him. He popped his hatch, grabbed a bag, and was about to slam the hatch when I said, excuse me. The dude jumped and dropped the pizza. Duck duck duck. I waved a 50 at him, dude, it's okay, the pizza was just a prank anyway. Take it out of the bag and you can keep the change. Seriously. Thanks man. He handed me the box and took off. Diane followed me to the door. I crouched down a little and held the box partly in front of my face, and rang the bell. The door opened and some guy I didn't know stood there in his boxers. We didn't order that was all he said as I pushed through the door with Diane hot on my heels. Then the guy said Diane. Where the duck is he Dave? I dropped the pizza in a chair, and then turned to give Diane some help with Dave. There was no need, she hit him pinned to the wall with a hand around his throat. She slapped him, I said, where the duck is he? Dave pointed down the hall. Diane dropped him and brushed past me as she stormed down the hall and through a bedroom door. This time I was hot on her heels. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't what I saw. Ginny was on her back and Amy had her bum in the air and her face buried in Ginny's kitty. Ron had a death grip on Amy's hips as he pounded her. At least he did until a screaming banshee reached him and flung him across the room. Ron was yelping as Diane stomped him with her cowboy boots. Ginny was screaming and trying to push Amy away. Finally, Amy realized something was wrong and she flopped over on her side. I reached over and grabbed a fistful of her hair and pulled her to her feet. Get your clothes on and go home. She looked like she was going to argue with me until Diane stepped back from Ron and said. Where is that witch? 
I grabbed Diane in a bear hug, and Amy wisely chose to run. At 6'2 and 230 pounds I am not a small man, but it took all I had to drag Diane out of that bedroom. Diane. Diane. You have to stop. You'll get arrested if you don't chill out before the cops get here. She struggled a bit more as I held her then she clamped onto me and sobbed out why. Why would he do this? I thought we were good. I thought he loved me. I held her as she cried herself out. Come on, you need to leave. Go home. You don't want to be in here when the cops show up. She gathered herself, ran to her truck, and drove off. I went back into the bedroom. Ron was setting up against the wall while Ginny attended to him. He had a nasty cut above one eye and a split lip. I figured he'd likely be black and blue across his upper body within the next couple of days. Ginny was still unclothed as I looked down at her. Is he going to live? Yeah, that crazy witch might have killed him if you hadn't pulled her out of here. Ron struggled to his feet. What did you do to Amy? Where is she? I didn't hurt her, I sent her home. I figured that would give me time to cool down before I face her again. John, man, she really loves you. This was just a physical thing. We've always been super hot for each other, even when we were fighting. Just shut the duck up or I'll finish what Diane started. Ron stopped spouting his bullshit and let Ginny dab at his face. You might want to take him to the air and get his ribs checked out. I'm leaving before I change my mind about kicking his bum. Ginny asked where's Dave. I laughed, after Diane finally let go of him, I bet he is hiding somewhere, I said. I drove around a bit, thinking about what I'd say to Amy. I stopped a couple of streets away from my house and called Diane. She seemed to have calmed down and was waiting to hear from Ron or Ginny. I suggested Ginny take him to the air to be checked out. That always takes several hours, so don't be concerned if he is not home for a while. Dear. Oh, I guess I lost my temper. Shit, I hope he's okay. He was sitting up and talking when I left, so nothing serious. Okay, John, sorry about all of this. What are you going to do? Divorce, tonight was obviously not their first time, so we're through. You? I don't know, I still love the bastard, so I'm not sure I can walk away. Well, do what is best for you. You don't owe him anything, just take care of yourself. You too, John. Nicole is a grown woman, so you don't need to worry about her. Just take your own advice and take care of number one. We said our goodbyes and I pulled into my driveway. Amy was sitting on the couch in a robe. Her hair was damp so I assumed she'd showered. I went to the fridge, grabbed a beer, and sat in my recliner. She looked resigned, with no tears, just sad. I waited for her to raise her face to look me in the eyes. So how long? About three months. Tonight was the third time we've gotten together for sex. We had lunch three or four times and met for drinks a few times too. I shook my head. You had to know you'd get caught and you had to know what I'd do when I caught you, so why? I thought we were being careful, I was sitting here trying to figure out how I got caught this time. I mean, I know you must have gotten home early, but I thought I was covered anyway with an eye. I just gave her a tight-lipped half-grin, but didn't tell her about the iPad thing. So are you in love with him again still? Oh hell no. He's an ass, I'm not sure I even like him, no way I love him. So what the duck, Amy? Beats me. We've always had a strong attraction for each other. I just can't seem to say no to him. I was doing pretty well at keeping him at bay until Ginny joined in. I'd never been with a woman, Ginny is by. She and Ron seduced me that first time and I was hooked. So three somethings are what you like now. Why didn't you ask me about it? I think Ginny is pretty hot. Ginny is just an add-on, I love having sex with Ron. I always have. Why didn't you come to me and tell me how you felt instead of sneaking around behind my back? Oh sure, every man wants to hear his wife tell him she's overwhelmingly attracted to some other guy. I couldn't do that to you, John, I love you. I didn't want to hurt you. I convinced myself you'd never know and I could get away with it. I needed to scratch that itch, but I need you too. Her words were like a dagger to my heart. She was right, it killed me to hear her admit she was hopelessly attracted to Ron. I believe she didn't love him, but I knew she didn't love me the same way I loved her. He must be some kind of lover because, from what I saw, his equipment is nothing to brag about. No, she chuckled, he might not even be as big as you, but there's something there that just clicks between us. Look, John, sex with you is great. I have no complaints at all, in fact, I even brag about you to the girls. It's just Ron and I have this sex thing that just draws us to each other. I nodded slowly, I see, so where does that leave me? I don't know. I sure as hell don't want to lose you, but I'm not sure I'm strong enough to stay away from Ron. I know that must hurt you, and I hate that, but I'm trying to be honest with you at least now I mean. Amy, you know me, I'm not the kind of guy who is going to share. 
and I'll never agree to some kind of swapping thing with Ron and Diane, so that leaves me no choice. I'll see an attorney on Monday and start the divorce. Amy gasped and her hand flew up to her face. Oh god no. Please, John, there must be some way to save our marriage. She hung her head and sobbed, then suddenly her head snapped up. Ginny. What if it was Ron and Ginny we swapped with? You know Ginny has the hots for you. Or, or, you could have both of us together, I'm sure she'd love that. Please, John, there must be something we can do. I could hear the desperation in her voice and see it in her eyes. Maybe she wasn't lying, maybe she really does love me. My mind flashed back to the vision of Ginny with Amy, and I shook my head. Ginny is a beautiful young lady, but she's not my wife. I'm not willing to share my wife with anyone, and besides, I couldn't do that to Diane. Amy sobbed loudly and held her face in her hands. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Nicole was not shocked when I told her I was divorcing her mother. I feel bad that I may have set all of this into motion by telling you what I heard at mom's party. I just can't believe she could be so stupid. Don't feel bad, you did the right thing. I caught her by myself, you had nothing to do with that. I love you, baby, and I always will. I'm divorcing you mom, not you. I still want to be a part of your life. Dad, I love you. I know Ron is my bio dad, but you're my true father. I think Ron loves me, as much as he is capable, but it's not like you and me. Mom said she's moving in with Ginny, and you're keeping the house until I graduate. I want to stay here with you when I'm not at school. Will that be okay? I hugged her, of course, baby, you're always welcome to stay with me, no matter where I live. Amy didn't fight me with the divorce. I gave her cash for her half of the house, and we split everything else. I suppose some guys would have wanted to crush her and take revenge on Ron. Well, from what I hear from Nicole, Diane has a death grip on Ron's nuts, and forced him to move back to Florida with her. Amy sometimes calls me late at night, usually somewhat drunk, and begs me to take her back. I still care for her and a part of me wishes she was still with me, but I can't forget what she did. I have tried to understand how she could risk everything just for a duck, but it's still a mystery to me. I haven't spent much effort trying to find someone new, I just haven't felt up to it. I did run into Ginny at a bar near my work. She still looks hot and offered to come home with me, but I walked away. Maybe in a few months, if I'm really in the mood, I'll give her a call. Nicole still stays with me when she comes home from school. She visits her mom and they seem to have rekindled their relationship, but it's not like it was before. Some may ask how I could be so devoted to a child that doesn't share my DNA, but it's just pure love. There are millions of adopted and stepkids out there that are loved every bit as much as those born into a family. Nicole still calls me dad, and she will always be my little girl. Reach the end. Then you're my target audience for these stories, and the person I'm doing my video for. Please subscribe, like, and stay tuned for the next video.